Hey programmers, welcome back. Right now let's work through this next exercise for arrays. So what you wanna do is give this exercise set an honest shot. So go to the link in the description, work through it. And if you get stuck or finish the exercise, you'll definitely wanna watch this walkthrough. But for now, I'll go ahead and go over these problems. And so let's start with our lengthiest word problem. So in this problem, what I wanna do is take in a sentence string as an argument and return the longest word of that sentence. And we have a little extra bit here. Uh, if there's gonna be a tie, then what I want to do is return the word that appears later in the sentence, right? So looking at the first example, I have the sentence, I am pretty hungry. Notice that the final answer should be hungry. Hungry has six characters, but you're also probably noticing that pretty also has six characters. However, like they just said in the problem, I want to always break ties by preferring to return the later word in the sentence. I kind of have other scenarios, right? Looking at the second one over here, it looks like that in the second sentence, outside is the longest word because outside has seven characters and there's no other word that has seven characters. So let's start to solve this one. And I'm gonna take in this sentence. And like you can probably expect, because I want to check the particular words of the sentence, I'm gonna start by splitting the sentence on a space, right? We've seen this pattern uh, quite a few times now. So now that I have this array of words, what I want to do is begin to iterate through uh, elements of this array. So now that I have my base logic, what I want to do is really choose a particular strategy for this one. So hopefully this problem actually reminds you of something like max value or min value. Here, what I'm basically solving is I want to choose the word with the maximal length. So I can still use that maximum logic. So recall that to establish that, what I want to do is use like an outer variable around my for loop to track like the current largest thing I've seen so far. So here I'll call that longest. And that's gonna represent my longest word so far. And I'm gonna default that to be the very first word of the sentence, right? Cool, so now that I have my longest variable being tracked, I can actually adjust my for loop and I want to begin my iterations at index one, right? Because there's no point of double comparing the first word zero to zero again, right? Doesn't make any sense. So I'm gonna start the second word technically in this for loop, and now I can do my comparison logic, right? So like we always say, what I wanna do is check, hey, if the current word I'm iterating through, so I'll say if words at square bracket i, if its length, right, if its length is bigger than the longest length, then I should do that replacement. So I'm gonna say longest should become words at index i. I think just for some clarity, I'm going to replace these uh, double expressions, words at index i, just a single word, and I'll create that variable at the top. Cool. So any point in time, the variable word will contain the current word that I'm iterating through. So as I iterate, if my current word is bigger than the longest I have saved, I'm going to replace it. So after I do that comparison for every single word of the sentence and possibly replace longest over time, I'm going to return the longest. And so you may notice that this solution is actually a little off. Let's go ahead and run it and adjust it. But let's see how this baseline solution runs. So the last three examples are totally correct, but our first one isn't quite working. And if you remember, that's the special scenario where I need to break ties. So it looks like our function mistakenly returned pretty where it should have returned the string hungry, right? And so what I want to do is step through this code a little closer. And so let's go ahead and trace through how the longest variable changes. So I know that at the very start, I just set longest to be the first word of the sentence because I have uh, the word split up, right? So that's gonna be I. And now I start my for loop, right? So my for loop begins iterating technically at the second word of the sentence because I'm looking at index one. So word is going to refer to am. And so I'm gonna check am.length is that bigger than i.length, right? And that is true because two is bigger than one. And so what I do is replace i with am. So cool thing about this pattern so far is I am storing the actual words themselves, like the strings am inside of uh, this variable, but I'm doing the comparison about the length of those strings, right? Because by the end, I don't want to return like the number representing the length, I want to return the actual word itself, right? But let's keep going. And so on the next iteration, our word is going to refer to pretty. And I check, is pretty.length bigger than am.length? And that's true because six is bigger than two. So I replace it. And here's where things go wrong in this next iteration. Next iteration, word is gonna be pointing to hungry. And I check, is hungry.length or is six bigger than six? And that's false, right? Six is not strictly greater than six. And that's why I actually don't replace pretty with hungry. But I actually do wanna do that in this problem, right? So to fix it, if you find a word that is equal to your current longest, 
then still replace it. Know that this for loop is iterating left to right. And so if I see any ties, I know that I still want to take that latest word. Right, so with that small change that is making this from greater than to greater than or equal to, that should actually fix uh, this entire solution for us. So key thing to take away from this lengthiest word problem is to really notice that it's just a spinoff of like our max value logic, right? We use that same strategy of iterating through the things we want to consider and then using an outer variable to track like the biggest thing we've seen so far, updating it as we iterate and find something bigger. So now let's step through this alternating caps problem. And so in this problem, what I want to do is take in another sentence string, uh, but this time return the sentence where it's just modified a little bit. What I want to do is have my output sentence alternate between lowercase and uppercase uh, characters. So my input sentence is take them to school. Notice that the first word should always be lowercase in like either example. And then I alternate between uppercase and then lowercase and flipping back and forth between the two. So you guessed it, since I want to grab individual words from this sentence, I'm going to split the sentence, right? Now that I have my array of words, what I'll want to do is iterate through them. So I'm going to use a nice classic for loop. As I iterate through my words, I'm just going to go ahead and save uh, the current word into its own variable just for some cleanliness. And now I'll have to think about the uh, logic I want in my code. So how can I get this like alternating pattern? Well, one thing we can leverage here is how our indices flow, right? So I know the first index is going to be 0. 0 is an even number. The next index is 1. 1 is an odd number. Next index would be two, two is an even number, right? So if I reference the indices that I flow through, they're gonna alternate between even or odd, right? And I know I can use modulo to check even or odd, and I can use that as my basis for alternating like the capitalization of these words. In other words, I want if statements that check, hey, if I'm at an even index, so if I mod two equals zero, then I must be at an even index, in which case I'll just, for now, maybe just console.log the word, uh, but the lowercase version of it, right? Because it says uh, we should always start with lowercase at the beginning. So I'll say word dot to lowercase. And then otherwise, if I have an else statement here, else statement will always fire when this condition is false, which means that the index must be odd. So if that's the case, what I ought to do is just print out the uppercase version of that word. And let's just run this to see how our code works so far. Obviously, we're not returning the correct value, but I just want to make sure I have the alternating logic going, right? So take them to school, and that's alternating pretty good. But to kind of wrap this one up, I don't want to just print out the words, right? I want to return a new sentence. So what I should have done is actually at the start possibly created a new array. So I'll call it like new words. And as I iterate, I'm going to push those modified words into that new words array. So I'll say new words dot push those lowercase or uppercase words. And then at this point, once I do that, once I add or rather push all of my new words into that array, for now I'll return new words. I'll do a quick spot check. How is that looking now? So I'm returning an array of the words and they're capitalized appropriately, but I see in this problem, I don't want to return an array. I want to return a string, right? And so what I should do is combine these words back into a sentence by just joining on a space. So that should be good to go. Let's run this other example as well. Cool, so there we have it. Now let's step through this number range problem. So in this problem, I want my function to take in three numbers, min, max, and step, and I want to return all numbers between min and max, inclusive, but at step intervals. So if I look at the first example, my min is 10, my max is 40. So basically my array should have some numbers between uh, 10 and 40, but I wanna grab like every fifth number. Right, so I notice I have 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and so on. Uh, looking at this second example, notice that my min is 14, my max is 24. So all of these numbers lie somewhere between uh, 14 and 24. And notice how I generate these numbers, right? So I start at 14, always start my start number. And what I do is I just add or step by three every time. So what I'm saying is 14 plus three is 17, 17 plus three is 20, 20 plus three is 23. If I did 23 plus three, that'd give me 26, which would actually be beyond my maximum. So I actually can't go that far. So I would end it over there. So let's start attacking this one. I'll begin by thinking about the return type I wanna have over here, and it should be an array. So I'll create that array. I'll call it range. And by the end, I'm gonna return that range, but it should be filled with some numbers. So how do I actually generate those numbers? Well, I could just use a for loop, right? And I'll use this for loop to iterate specifically from min to max inclusive, right? The problem even gives us that nice hint uh, in the description. 
and I want to increment by the step, right? So I'll do i plus equals step. So this is a very dynamic uh, for loop. Then from there, it's pretty straightforward. What I just want to do is take the current number that I have, which is stored in i, and just push it into my range. So I can say range.push. I'll go ahead and push i right inside. So let's give that a go. And there we have our number range problem. So now let's step through our remove short words problem. And so in this problem, we're taking in a nice uh, sentence string. What I want to do is remove the words that are shorter than four characters, right? So if I have the input sentence, knock on the door, will you? Notice that I have removed on, the, and you, right? Because those are not at least four characters long. So let's go ahead and bang this one out. What I'll start by doing is, of course, splitting the sentence on a space, right? Because I want to analyze the length of the individual words. We need them nice and separate. Now that I have my array of words, let me go ahead and iterate through them. What I'll do is save every individual word to a nice variable. So I'll say let word equals words at index i. Then from there, I'll just want to consider the length of this word. So there are a few ways you can express this logic. I think it'll be pretty clean here if I kind of invert it. So uh, the problem explicitly asks for us to remove the words that are shorter than four characters long. What I can do is also just keep the words that are at least four characters long, right? So I'll express that over here. I'll say, hey, if the word has an okay length, so if the word dot length is good, so if it's at least four, then what I want to do is take that word in and keep it. So what I should probably do is before the for loop, have a nice place to, to store the words that I want to keep. So I'll say let chosen words equals an empty array. And as I hit a word with an okay length, I'll go ahead and push it into chosen words, right? So I'm pushing all those words. And at the very end, just like we saw before, I want to join up my chosen words uh, back together. So I'm going to join on a space. So let's give that a shot. Nice. And there's a solution for remove short words. Now, finally, let's step through this common elements problem. It's a very interesting one. And so in this problem, what we want to do is write a function that takes in two arrays as arguments. And what we want to return is a new array containing the elements that are common to both. So if I look at my first example, right, these are my two input arrays. And when I pass them into my function, my function should return an array of just A and B, because A and B are the elements that are in both array one and array two. So for example, notice that I don't put in C and D because C and D are only in array one. And I don't take Y because Y is only in array two. So I only want to return an array of the common elements. So I'll start attacking this problem by thinking about what type I want to return, right? I want to return an array. So let me go ahead and create that array. So I'll say let, and I'll call it common elements. I'm gonna return that by the end, but I should be pushing some elements before I return it, right? And what I can do to tackle this one is start by iterating over either of my arrays. And we'll kind of see why that is in a little bit. I'm gonna to choose to arbitrarily iterate over array one. So I'll just write that classic for loop to iterate through array one. And as I iterate through array one, I'll just be nice and clear and save the current element in its own variable. So I'll say le equals array one at index i. And so here's what I have so far. Because I just took this element from array one, I know for a fact that it's inside of array one, right? That must be true. And so the only thing I need to do in addition to that is also check, hey, is this element also in array two? And so I'm really just checking, you know, is an element in an array? I can use the includes method, right? So I just want to check, hey, if array two includes the element as well, then it must be common to both, right? And so in that case, I'll take my common array and push into it this element. All right, so neat little logic here. This for loop, because I'm literally iterating through array one, I know that every le I hit is by definition inside of array one. So I just need to, in addition to that, check if that element's also in array two. So when this if statement is true, that means le is inside of both. So I push it into the common array. And after I do that check for every element, what I wanna do is just return everything I pushed. Let's go ahead and run this one. This problem is pretty elegant. Nice, and there we have common elements. And so that wraps up the walkthrough for all of these problems. What you'll want to do before you hop into the next video is, of course, make sure you have these solutions down pat, right? So if you need some help with these problems, what I want you to do is pause and actually work through these problems on your own again, right? Make sure you have like full ownership of these problems, right? Hold yourself accountable. And then, you know, once you're feeling really ready, then go on to the next video.